Hi, I'm Carol Pepper, CEO of Pepper International. Welcome to Module 5 of my course, How to Create Your Own Single Family Office. In this course, we're going to talk about creating an investment process that allows you to grow your family fortune. In this, we're going to cover managing the conflicts of interest in the financial services world, what is a chief investment officer and why you should have one, professional asset class management, the role of consolidated reporting, and the role of an investment committee. Let's start with something that you really need to understand as a family member, and that is there are massive conflicts of interest in the financial services world. When you go to a bank or brokerage firm and they say that they are your trusted advisor, please remember they are actually your trusted salesperson. And just like a salesman or saleswoman at Mercedes-Benz is not going to send you to the Lexus dealer, the same way somebody from Morgan Stanley is not going to send you to J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs is not going to send you to Merrill Lynch. Each of those people can provide solutions to you out of their platform. But when you have a lot of money, you want to have your money in multiple different firms and you want to have lots of different investment choices. So please understand that you need an independent person, whoever that person may be, who just is paid by you to help you select and oversee all of the assets that you have managed for you professionally. That's number one. Understand the conflicts of interest. Understand that the people who work at these firms are salespeople, they are not advisors and treat them accordingly. So the chief investment officer that you hire to work with your single family office will be that point person. He or she will oversee all of your investments, understand your family's needs very deeply, have strong investment experience, provide good investment returns for you, and most importantly, will have the kind of references that will make you comfortable to hire that person. This chart here shows us all of the functions that the Chief Investment Officer is going to oversee for your family. First, he or she is going to help you develop an investment process that works for your family. That process is going to include a number of important steps. Then they're going to oversee investment performance and help you measure all of the different types of investments appropriately so you really know how much money you're making and how much risk you're taking. And finally, they're going to have a strategy and they're going to help you find the kinds of co-investments and deals that are important if you really want to grow your fortune. Now, you might want to have an in-house chief investment officer and you might want to have an outsourced chief investment officer. I personally act as an outsourced chief investment officer. Why outsource? Sometimes a family needs a highly professional chief investment officer, but they don't need this person on a full-time basis. The job is just not large enough. So in that case, they have a much more cost-effective solution if they hire an external chief investment officer than an internal chief investment officer. But whether this person is full-time for you as an internal CIO or external and working with several families, the most important thing is that this person is only paid by the family. This person should not be taking any kind of kickback or cut from the investment products that they're presenting to you for your consideration. This is critical. Always make sure that they're that in the contract of your CIO, it says that they are paid by you to represent your interests. And as your fortune grows, they will make more money as well. Now, some families like to have some of the large external CIO companies. The challenge with those companies can be that they have a platform of investments that they would like you to use to manage your money. This means that they are sometimes taking a fee from the product managers and taking it as it were on both sides, taking money from the managers and taking money from you. I don't recommend that type of chief investment officer. Whatever platform you choose, find someone who's only sitting on one side of the table because frankly, no one can sit on two sides of the table at the same time. Now here we have a picture of what it would look like to have a chief investment officer. This person would have a reporting system and would interact with all the asset managers that are hired on behalf of you and they would give some of the information that's required to legal or accounting advisors or other experts and then would present to you and to the various family members the results of the investments that that family member is involved with. So if you have, for example, multiple trusts with different beneficiaries, the consolidated reporting system will create the right report for each beneficiary and perhaps the head of the family sees all the trust information while each beneficiary sees what is important for him or her.